We received an interesting question today on our Cab Rider forum asking how you draw a dishwasher end panel using Cab Rider. And since I just finished the kitchen doing that, I thought it would be an interesting to share, thing to share with everyone. And it's also a great uh, study in how to use parameters to your advantage to make uh, modifications to get what you want in the end. So here's a kitchen that I was working on. And you can see we've got a dishwasher here that's a little smaller than normal. It's only 18 inches wide. But it needs an end panel over here. So I want to show you how we can, one method that we can use to draw that. And first I'm going to turn off the counters and the appliances <clears throat> so we can get a more clear view of what's going on. So we take our tape measure tool, we measure from here to here, we see we have an 18 inch opening, which is what we want. And then if we look again from here to here, we can see that um, this style will be an inch and nine sixteenths wide. So I made these, these marks already. And my styles are an inch and nine sixteenths wide because they cover a three quarter inch interior carcass side and a 13 sixteenths panel thickness on the, on the side, which is what we're going for. So I want to start by reloading or retrieving the cabinet defaults. I'm going to go over here to my cab writer uh, toolbar and choose the retrieve cabinet defaults command after highlighting um, a portion of this cabinet. What that's going to do is it's going to reload my defaults to um, what I use to draw these cabinets, which is basically a, a face frame design. And But I don't want my cabinet to start off the floor with the toe kick. I need it to go all the way to the floor. And I'm only going to use part of this cabinet to represent an end panel, which will become clear here in a second. Um, which means I got to go to my carcass tab and I'm going to turn off my toe kick altogether. But I'm also going to set the toe kick height to zero because if I left it at four inches, my cabinet would not have a toe kick drawn, but it would start four inches off the ground. And I need it to start zero inches off the ground. The other thing you'll notice about these cabinets is they have um, some holes being drilled uh, for line boring. If I go to my project tab, you can see I have line boring selected. But what I want to do is go to the line boring tab and turn that off altogether. So I don't want any type of holes being drilled here. And now I should be able to draw a cabinet. So I'm going to go back to my cab writer toolbar and create, uh, do the story stick command. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to choose right end panel because that's what I want over there. Now I'm going to go just choose some random distance here and do a left end, let's say filler because that's fairly benign. We'll see how this all works here in a second. Um, so I'm done drawing the cabinet, so I'm going to hit the command key because I'm on a Mac. Or if this was a PC, I would hit the end key. And the box type I'm going to select is a standard base because I don't want any drawers or anything fancy here. And zero doors. So now I've got myself what looks like a cabinet, but I don't really want a cabinet there. I'm going to select the cabinet and then say cab writer, select a cabinet. And actually, I didn't want to select the whole cabinet. What I want to do is select the parts that I don't want. I'm going to hit the Shift key as I select all these parts. Shelves, the bottom, the top stretchers. I'm going to hit Delete. What I'm left with is basically an end panel. It goes all the way to the floor as a panel has an interior carcass side to give it some thickness. Um, I'm going to turn off the floor for a second. And I'm going to use the orbit tool right uh, here. I'm going to go underneath. So I like to, and I'm going to triple click on the interior panel or interior carcass side here. I'm going to use the push pull tool. Nope, not that one this one. And I'm going to push it up a half an inch. 
so that I'm not trying to scribe the interior panel to the floor. And there we go. If I put my appliances back in, and my countertop back in, I got myself an end panel. Now, um, like my dishwasher is encroaching a little bit. I need to move that over. But um, that is one way to do it. So if I were to redraw this cabinet, because this really is a cabinet with some of the parts missing, all those parts would come back. And I would have to just simply select them again and um, delete them. Now, I also like to have a scribe down here at the bottom. So if I choose these two parts and open my window extended entity info, notice I don't have the length resized by anything. So on the cut list, it's going to come out the exact length that it is. I'm going to resize the length by one half of an inch for both these parts so that on the cut list, I get an extra half inch in length uh, to use for scribing the floor. Oops, I need to do it on this front style as well. Resize length by one half inch. And when I choose this lower rail, I'm going to resize the width. It's already resized by a sixteenth because my shaper takes off a sixteenth when it mills this. So I'm going to add another half inch to that and resize it by nine sixteenths. So it's a little wider to match the extra length on the styles. And now I'm done. So when I export this on my cut list, everything will come out right, and I've got myself a panel. That's all there is to it.